Hey everybody, Pinchy Al here, and we're back with another episode with the Mark V R32. And on today's episode, we're going to pull out the control arms and swap out some bushings. Let's get to work. So for today's tool set, you're going to need a breaker bar, an 18 millimeter socket, 16 millimeter socket, and some girth because it's going to be a pain. Um, there's four main bolts that need to be removed. Sorry with my dirty ass hands, but I've been working all day. The four bolts that we need to focus on down below are these. So there's one there on the subframe because we have to lower the subframe. So there's an 18 here. And there's an 18 right there. Those four, um, they're identical on both sides of the chassis. We need to drop, uh, lower that so we can get this stupid bolt out. That's an 18 as well. Now, unfortunately, someone, um, this car's got an oil uh, drip because someone stripped the oil drain plug on this car, but that's for future things. We're going to have a DIY on how to swap out this oil pan soon because <laughs> we have to fix that now. So once you do that, there's going to be one, two, three bolts on this control arm. Again, you're going to need an 18 and two 16s. Same over there. You're going to need to pull and remove these three 60 millimeter bolts as well. And this one's pretty easy. You just unbolt them. You get a flathead screwdriver crack it in there and then pry it open and that should drop your control arm from here and then we're going to need the t this removed and that one removed and we'll show you guys what to do next. So we're going to break loose this guy. Oh, I already broke him loose. <laughs> I thought I did. So this guy's got to go down. This one has to actually come out. Just FYI. The one that has to be slightly loose but do not remove it all the way is the one that's holding that's pretty cool i don't know they look like that okay so once you unbolt this one because that's holding the subframe up uh, from over here in the back then you hold then you got this one over here you get your extension a nice six or eight inch extension will do you good or a 12 inch don't go any longer than that break loose now the reason for this you have to be able to drop the subframe down so this bolt that's right here can come out so if not it's just gonna hit the oil pan and you're just gonna have a control arm just stuck there now this is staying up because the other side isn't unbolted confirming that Typically, when I unbolt subframes, I'll just give it a couple turns so it just stays there. We're going to take off the bolts off of the control arm that hold the ball joint. And go see the other side now. Be right back. So, we, remo we actually removed all the bolts of the subframe. Um, it still wasn't just enough clearance, but now with all of them removed, and keep in mind you have one, two, uh, three, six actual bolts in total that hold the subframe in place stack because they bolt to the actual body. That's how we know it's part of the subframe. Um, I missed one. So there's one, two, and then three. Same on the opposite side. Once you do that, it gives you the ability to kind of move the subframe. You know, ah, kind of like out of the way almost, but not too much. 
Um, you can't drop it that much because uh, it's <laughs> you still have the you still have the exhaust, you have the steering rack. That's all part of it. So there's only so much you can go down. This is where the annoyance comes into play because oh man, this one bolt right here is just totally in the way of the oil pan. I mean, I'm hoping that by moving it like towards me or down, I can get it out. I'll see. I'll keep working at it. I'll give you guys an update when I get to that point. Okay, so now with the subframe completely unbolted, I'm able to pull down and get this bolt almost out. Um, it's tricky because you have very limited space and the bolt pretty much will come out. It's just got to and dangle it a little bit and just do it by hand as much as you can it's so annoying because they could have just designed the oil pan to be a little different right there it's quite annoying honestly I tried to use an impact gun but it didn't work it just pushed it back in because of the vibration, so. It's almost out. I was like, I can feel the end of the, the bolt coming out already. Uh, talk about a pain in the butt, guys. That was what I needed. There it is. Ah. Now the control arm is now removed. Thank Jeebus, holy smokes, is that annoyingly hard. <laughs> but it's now removed. Repeat the process on the other side and get it done. All right, so next is to press out the bushing. On this guy. So you get your press lined up. You got a 10 millimeter socket to sit right in the middle of that. And then we pump it up and pop it out. And as it's going down, just hold on to the control arm. It'll pop out. Alright, let's pop in the new one and let's get to work. Okay, now you got to remember the orientation of your control arm. The actual bushing has two sides to it. Okay, and what I mean, let me get this out for you guys so you can see it. Okay, see there's a deep side and then kind of a flush side. The flush side goes out, the deep side goes in. And remember the orientation too. 
the big bolt or the larger hole, the single one, goes inwards and the two smaller ones go out. On top of that, you have to make sure it's level, okay? The bushing itself is um, oriented like kind of like a six-sided figure, so a hex. You can see that. So it's you, you can't clock it. You have to just put it in. And it's oriented that uh, the, um, act, the control arm is also set up that way. It has that same shape, so it keeps everything square for you. Once you get it there, you're going to manhandle this in as deep as, as flush as you can get it in, and then reinstall your control arm. Okay, quick rundown on what I had to do to get the control arm in, but it made sense. <coughs> so... The issue that I had is that the control arm was not um, wanting to, what's the word, um, stay in place or line up here. So what you have to do is mount the control arm first to the ball joint, get one or two bolts on there. So that gives you the alignment to get this nice and straight in. and then. With a wrench or a pry bar, pry on here and pull down, pry down. So, I mean, pry up. So this goes down just far enough so you can get a, so you can get it in there and hit it in. I had to pry down and hit it in with a hammer so I couldn't film that while I was doing this. But I got it and it finally got in. Now, the control arm bushing over here will line up accordingly once you hit this guy incorrectly we're going to repeat the process over there on the driver's side and get this done get you guys over here down here below let me just get my charger these gopros have like the worst battery life ever Can you guys see that to a point? Yeah. Here's the ball joint. Here's where the control arm goes here and here. I'm going to show you guys what I mean when you guys put these in. Because the control arm has no more play or the bushing has no more play, you can't really bend this and get it in. So, smartest thing you can do, or the easiest way of doing this is get the control arm on the ball joint. Okay, put the nuts on it really quick. They don't have to be all the way on, just got to be on. That way the control arm doesn't fall down on you. Okay, now this gives you a little bit better articulation on getting the control arm pretty much in place. You just got to turn it. So, lines up, going in. It's a snug fit, so sometimes you might have to hit it in with a hammer, lightly. So, turn your volume down. But keep doing that, you'll get it in. Uh, let me see if I can do it this way. There we go. There we go. It's just it's angled all weird. All right, now that's done. You get the bolt back, you toss the oil over here, and then you gotta get it started. And then what you do with your wrench over here, you're gonna push down on your subframe. 
same time. That way you can get it in and started. Because if not, you're never going to get it started right here. It's just going to go in all weird and wonky. And what you want to do is try to get it started by hand. Wiggle it back and forth, back and forth until you get it in. And then once you get it going, you'll be able to use an impact gun or something and just ugga ugga it on. But yeah, this method works and you can see it works. It's just now threading it on is the next pain in the butt. Once you get it going, it'll get going. It won't stop. The nice thing about these bolts, they have a round tip. It helps it guide it and center the damn bolt. So you prevent cross-threading. I don't know why they don't do all bolts like that. It's kind of dumb, but whatever. Maybe Volkswagen, hey, hear me out. Do all your hardware like that. It'd be nice. And uh, fix your transmission and your other orientation, man. Dropping a subframe to pull out a control arm is ridiculous. Honestly. Uh, the shop that charges you to do this. I'm sorry, guys. You're going to end up... Bushings are going to end up costing you, what? 500 bucks to replace just because freaking subframe has to come off and then you have to do an alignment on this stupid car because you took off the subframe the subframe has to be aligned so I am giving my buddy Tony a heads up about that too because <laughs> he has to do that um, once that's nice and snug work your way on bolting everything else up now there's gonna be a trick get your jack and jack it from the middle here while you're jacking it up all right, now that I got the subframe moved up a couple millimeters, we're going to bolt it in. So the one covered in completely all this white grease goes up in the front one. Now, get your get an extension and get your 18 mil and see if you can thread it in by hand. You only need to thread in like four or five good quality turns, okay? If that goes in nicely, then do the next one right over here. It's this guy right here. Same process. It has to go in by hand. So like that one doesn't want to go in. So we're going to give that one, we're going to pull it out slowly. Make sure we don't have anything issue, any issue here. What it is is that it's leaning towards it. Because the subframe is so far off. So what we're going to do is bolt in the other side like I did this side. Because this one went in nicely. We're going to bolt that one up and then move the frame up higher and then we'll hand tighten these two in the back all right so we're at the tail end of this diy it kicked me in the butt a little bit guys i gonna be honest with you it got me a little bit but figured out some stuff okay so now to get your pretty much control arm bushings mounted correctly number one it's very important. You can mount them, but be careful because you can cross thread them. I almost did. Um, well, I thought I did, but um, since these bolts are very long and they go through one, two holes, 
and then the third one to actually thread in, it gives you a false like cross thread sensation. So for you to feel better when you're bolting these on, get a flathead screwdriver or just a screwdriver in general. I have this punch right here and I crammed it in over here towards the back and bend it or not bend it, but wiggle it left and right until I'm able to line up the bolt holes correctly here and here and here for this 18 and the two 16s back here. Once you do that, problem solved, yay, jazz hands and stuff. Thread, uh, bolt them all in, torque them to spec. Same with this one back here, this guy right here, which bolts into the body up here as well. Um, torque everything down to spec. I got this guy up here, the other 18 that's way up here. And then, you know, bolt down everything else that you took apart before you got to this, uh, get to this point. Um, obviously the one that's over here, the control arm bushing, this big long one, that one was much easier once you drop the subframe. I know this is such a annoying task, but this is what has to be done to get these, these new guys installed on an R32. I don't know how the job is on a 2.0T, um, but currently this is what I had to do to do on a VR6 uh, Mark V. So uh, repeat the process on the other side and you're done. And again, torque everything down to spec. You're good to go. Uh, this took a lot longer than I would like, but it is now done. I'm happy. New bushings, uh, new rear bushings, new ball joints over here. Um, and then again, everything else just tightened down and torque to spec. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Pinchel's Garage. I appreciate you guys for watching everything that I do for the years and years of content that I've created. Um, crazy enough to hit today, we actually had a major scare. Uh, the house across the street from me, not even what, 30, 50 feet from my house, in front of my house, caught on fire insane i love the ramona fire department they were here within one to two minutes and saved my house from burning down so insane it was a crazy random brush fire from the neighbor behind them we don't know exactly the scenario what happened but insane um i will actually uh long story short everybody's healthy everybody's safe um but it was scary it was very very scary because it was it was real and it happened in, literally in front of my house. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys again for watching this and be safe out there because you never know uh, when something can happen out of nowhere. Peace out and you guys have a wonderful day.